All right, guys, today we are going to fully break down money. Why do you need to understand money? Understanding money is how you predict the future. You cannot act or accurately predict the future without understanding money. All the predictions you have are likely just coming from what you've heard from people who actually understand money. So that is why you need to learn it. I want you to really think of that in your head, the ability to predict the future. That could change your entire life. Take notes on this video, really obsess with it if you are serious about getting rich, getting money, understand these topics. Real quick, I want to give a massive shout out to the lighting to my left. Makes my biceps look pretty f***ing massive and everybody knows big biceps means higher views. So first, what is money? Money is a way of people to agree on the value of a good. When, when somebody wants to trade goods but they don't like the other person's goods, money is created because this is a way for a person A to get something from person B who wants something from person C when person C wants something from person A. It's a good way of equating value. So now, what, what, what originally was money and what originally gave it value? Money was originally gold and the weight of the money was how much it was valued. But this came with an issue. You needed gold for money and it was also slow and hard to transfer because you needed to weigh it to perceive the value of it. So what did countries do? Countries made a paper currency. The issues with paper currency though was one, it inflates the people could print unlimited paper currency. So that, that was an issue. And two, when you went across borders to another country or another city, it had a different form of paper money. So people would try exchanging these their goods and they would have no means of transaction because they didn't have any value for this paper money in their currency. So this is why countries around the world came up with the gold standard. What is the gold standard? The gold standard was simply having this paper money attached to gold. So say one pa say 50 paper monies was worth one ounce of gold in one country and 100 paper money was worth one ounce of gold in another. They would know that the 50 paper money is worth twice the value as the other. So, so, and at any time, they could exchange this in with the country for gold, which is what gives it actual value, the paper. Now, this came with an issue around World War I. World War I, we needed a bunch of extra money to fund the war. So all these, all these um, countries ditched the gold reserve and started printing constant money, printing, 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 and and to buy more weapons and ammunition to fund the war. This caused an issue of obviously inflation in these countries. And then where were they getting all this ammunition and all this stuff from? This was the United States. Now, after the war, the issues of inflation, depressions, all that stuff came up. But the real issue was in World War II, where this went to an even bigger extreme. By the end of World War II, the U.S. had all of the gold in the world, or most of it, almost all of the gold in the world. And these countries didn't have any gold. So what did they do? They backed their money by the U.S. dollar. They said, we'd exchange our dollar, or out, yeah, our dollar, for the U.S. dollar, and then you could exchange the U.S. dollar for gold. That's how the U.S. became the world, world reserve currency. Every country had the U.S. dollar to exchange for their currency because the US dollar was the only dollar at the time who had any value. Now, what happened af after this? After this, all the countries started getting sketched out and thought, well, if our money is just backed by the dollar, why don't we exchange all the dollars we have for the gold? So all these countries came in saying to the US, well, here's our dollars, give us gold. So the U.S. kept giving away their gold, and eventually, I believe 40 years later, they had around 30% of their gold after World War II. 
So this was a big issue for the U.S. and they said, we're abandoning the gold standard. You could no longer trade the U.S. dollar in for gold. And like that, there was nowhere else in the world with a gold standard. So the U.S. still remained the reserve currency because it was ex it was the standard across the world already. And with this, another reason why countries still kept the U.S. dollar as their means of exchange was because the U.S. actually made a deal with somewhere in the Middle East saying that people could only buy oil from that place in the Middle East with the U.S. dollar. So when, the U when a money isn't backed by anything, what is it valued by? It's valued by what it could buy. And what's the most important thing in the world at that time, and still to this day, gas and oil. And they made a deal where you could only use the US dollar to get gas and oil. And in exchange, they would defend this country with their military. Okay, now we're on to what gets me angry. We're on to why I bought the whiteboard, what is so stupid about our modern day system, enough history, what is actually happening in our modern day that we need to understand. So first, we need to understand what exactly is inflation. Inflation is the idea of having more currency than there was at the start. So say you have a house, you have a house, and that house is equal to $2. There are $2 in existence. One house, $2. Now, say the bank decides to print four more dollars, but there's only, there's same, still the same amount of houses in existence. So now that, that there's two plus four dollars, this house is now worth six dollars. So the owner of this house is now, is now getting the six dollars back. So it's not getting fucked by the bank, but the person who now has to buy the house, buy the assets, is getting fucked by the bank. Do you understand that? So you, the person going around buying stuff is getting fucked by the world. And the person who owns all of this, who owns all the property and owns all the items and is giving away stuff through entrepreneurship, surprisingly, if you didn't know, is the person who doesn't fail to this. So the rich get wealthier and the poor get poorer. And eventually it gets the, to the point where you can no longer escape. You're, you're stuck in eternal poverty because you could no longer keep up with this inflation. And this is what's happening. They're literally, they, they literally have an infinite debt machine over you. <laughs> it is crazy. The infinite debt machine says, is the fractional reserve banking. What is fractional reserve banking? So fractional reserve banking, say John has $10,000 he puts into the bank. The bank has to keep 10%, so the bank keeps 1,000, and the bank could give away 9,000. John, here's the bank. Now, the bank gives the $9,000 to Lucy. Lucy now has $9,000. Lucy buys a car with it. And now, Jeremy, gives the bank the $9,000. The bank has to keep 10% of it, so 900, and could give away 8,100. They're keeping 10%, so now the bank has 1,900, and they give away the 8,100, 8, so 8,100 to Patricia. Patricia gives it to yeah, somebody, and it say that's like seven thousand. I'm not doing the math right now. So, oh wait, no, that's eight thousand one hundred. But seven thousand over here. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> but eventually, it get, now how much is in the market? There's one that ten thousand plus nine thousand plus eight thousand one hundred. That right there is twenty seven thousand one hundred in the market. And the bank right now only has $3,000. They just made $30,000 out of 
out of John's original $10,000. They are infinitely printing money to put you in debt by giving out these loans. This money does not exist that they keep giving out. This money doesn't exist. It gets 10 x once you get to the bottom of this whole tree. That's how it works. Around 10 times the money ends up in the market after this. So now that you're in debt, now that you, now that you were a good boy, you went to college, you bought a house, you bought a car, you're probably around like say $500,000 in debt. That takes you 30 years. You're finally going to pay it off. But they tell you, oh, cars are good to buy. Cars are going to make you have a bunch of friends, make people like you. So you spend 50,000 on a car three times. You're now 650,000 in debt. By the end of those three years, you still 30 years, you still have 150,000 in debt. But that's right on your non-existent money that they just typed into their computer screen. Oh yeah, by the way, you have interest on all of that. So you're actually still $200,000 in debt. And by the time you're out of all of this debt, you're either dead and you pass on the debt to your kids or you're too old. You don't care about making money anymore because your whole life is wasted away and you just wanna have a little bit of a good time left with the rest of your life. So that right there is how they are raping you, bumming you with the debt system, and you don't realize you are getting bummed on accident. <laughs> you, you, you don't realize you're getting bummed. I don't know how that happens, but don't get bummed any longer and make money is the only situation to this. Work hard or solution to this. Work hard and make money. Now... Oh, the U.S. is constantly in war because we're trying to solve issues, right? That That's it, yeah? We're trying to solve issues around the world, make the world a better place, even though most of the time we go to war, it makes the world less democratic, actually. I'm not getting into that, but we're, war is a good thing, yeah? So this brings us to the Iron Triangle. Congress is at the top of the Iron Triangle. To the left or to the right is the Department of of defense and to the left of the triangle is the private companies the companies selling the the missiles the guns the ammunition stuff like that so we got the congress we got the department of defense and we got the companies so so using this system is how they infinitely get the government richer and they make you poor and you make they make you stuck in the situation you are in. And all of this, I'm explaining how it is only getting worse. If you look at the average life 50 years ago, it was a good life. I'd be fine with the average life 50 years ago. But this is only going to make your life worse. If you look at average today and say, well, average is fine. I mean, my parents have a good life and they were average. Well, no, your average life is going to be significantly worse. Look at their grandparents. Their grandparents had a great life with an average life. It's only getting worse because of all these damn reasons. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Stuff makes me mad. Okay, so the Congress, the people elected, they give money to the Department of Defense, right? Department of, of Defense funds these weapon companies to produce the weapons. Department of Defense is what decides when we go to war, how we're funding the wars, stuff like that. These companies are now funding the people in Congress to get reelected who fund them more. So say one person in Congress is funding the, these people a lot, the, the Department of Defense a lot then the companies are going to like them because that means they're getting more money and then therefore they're going to give the people in Congress more money to get reelected. And then wh why do the Department of Defense, why do these people want to give the companies more money? Well, because they're the people who own these companies. These people in the system get rich by going to war. If we're going to war, Congress is going to give the Department of Defense even more money which means the Department of Defense is going to need more money from the companies. Companies are going to fund people even more. So 
when people say we go to war to help people out and we're always trying to do the best for our country, whoever is at the top, that is a complete lie. They just don't understand how this whole system works. People complain that we're at war with Ukraine because they say, well, we need to help our home country right now. Our home country is the threat. But Congress doesn't care. The people at the top do not care because they are getting infinitely richer off of it. And you are going to get infinitely poorer and you need to escape now and actually make money so you could be at the top who gains money from these situations. <laughs> now, on to crypto. A lot of people have seen certain cryptocurrencies blow up. People get super rich off of them. So they are just investing in random ass coins and hoping that they get rich off of these random ass coins. What you need to understand is for every winner, there's a loser. There is no money generated outside of the government and outside of these banks. These people cannot generate money in crypto. So there has to be a loser for people to make money. Now, how exactly does this work? So what I am saying is stop investing in random ass coins, know what you're investing in, or make money first and then invest in the crypto because the companies who are actually getting rich off of crypto are buying crypto because of its use case. If you buy crypto off of its use case, then there's likely other people who want to buy the crypto. Does that make sense? So Bitcoin, for example, its use case is trans is no inflation and transferring money across borders and without any legal issues. So now that you're transferring crypto across borders and you could sell it easily, you know that it actually has value because your company sees value in it. So get rich, make money through entrepreneurship, and then compound that with crypto. But real quick, Let's have you understand crypto, understand how crypto is going to impact the future. And I'm going to make a quick guess on the future that I really hope nobody has said already. I got all excited thinking of this in the shower. I was showering and just thinking of crypto and AI. And I came up with this whole idea that may be said already, but I made sure not to research it because I want it to be my own idea. <laughs> So let me know in the comments if somebody already said that. But real quick, how is crypto mined? What is mining crypto? Mining crypto is simply having computers solve mathematic problems. And when you solve these mathematic problems, there's a chance of it eventually giving you a uh, Bitcoin. We're, we're talking specifically about Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin has a cap of 21 million. So every time you mine this crypto, you're getting closer to the cap of 21 million. To deal with this, every X amount of years, they cut the amount you get out of this in half. So it becomes, so it becomes more and more difficult to get this, to get any Bitcoin from mining. But what else is mining? Mining is also something else. It takes away the power from the banks. When you mine a Bitcoin, what you're also doing is confirming a transaction, confirming that a transaction was not a fraud or anything like that. And they get rewarded with a small sort of tax on that transaction. They tax the transaction slightly and they get part of that reward. That's how they're making a majority of their money. So to recap, what exactly is mining? Mining is simply solving a math problem to get Bitcoin. And then secondly, it's verifying transactions to get a small tax on that and in, in the reward or the form of Bitcoin. Now, how, do, how am I gonna predict the future? What exactly do I think the future is gonna look like and how could you use this? The future is going to have AI. We all know that's clear. The benefit of AI is speed. AI can do things way faster, way cheaper than any humans. So real quick, let me give you a quick example 
on how crypto or specifically Bitcoin is going to make millions when AI becomes a huge thing. Bitcoin is going to make become way higher valued when AI becomes a thing because of its speed. When speed works with speed, it works really well. There's nothing to slow it down. Right now, if you want to use AI to buy something across borders, say, say I have a robot. So I have a robot. This robot wants to buy a house across the seas. Say... So, the, so this robot wants to buy a house across the seas. We have two robots. There's a second one who also wants to buy a house across the seas. This one is using the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has to deal, through, deal with all these transactions of overseas purchases. But if you have a robot in both the area you want to purchase the house and in the U.S., the place where you're located, what you could do is have this robot... Over here in the UK, this one's in the US, this one's in the UK. This one sells your Bitcoin. This one has the access to the Bitcoin. It sells your Bitcoin over here to buy this house instantaneously. You get way more speed. You can make transactions with way more speed and predict the market and beat anybody who is not using Bitcoin because this person has to go through the government. This person does not have any speed behind him because the government is what is crippling him. In this case, there is nothing crippling him. It's simply the speed a transaction is verified through mining that's going to determine how quickly he could buy that house. So when there is good deals, the AI that's functioning on Bitcoin as their money system is always going to be the person or the AI who's not functioning on Bitcoin. So that is my prediction for the future. When that happens, everybody is going to want Bitcoin. There's going to be, it's going to be much higher valued because we're going to be much closer to the cap. We can't increase the amount of Bitcoin, even though there's more demand. So it's only going to shoot through the roof, the value of this. I'm not saying buy Bitcoin right now. I'm saying make money through entrepreneurship and then expect this to be the future. So put part of your money in this sector. I'm, that is not financial advice. I don't feel like getting sued in five years. <laughs> but um, if you found this video helpful, hopefully you took notes. If you took notes and put it on your Instagram story, I'd go ahead, repost you, whatever. But go ahead, take notes on this video. Really understand this. Try getting to the point where you could explain this and understand this as well as I did in this video, and then you will be able to predict the future. And if you want any of this stuff to change, if you want the government to stop bombing its people, stop focusing on LGBTQ rights, stupid stuff that doesn't matter, that doesn't exist, they're putting this stuff in your mind while bombing you secretly. So if you don't want that to happen, Go ahead, spread the knowledge, share this with whatever friends, get angry about it, understand it, because through understanding the genuine issues, that's how we fix it, not through the stupid rights. I mean, do you think people are going to have worse mental health when they're struggling to pay for what they eat or when they're struggling to, to pay for some surgery? Like... I'm not going to get into that, <laughs> but go ahead, leave any support. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.